I need a new computer. So if I'm going to get a new computer, well, I'm going to go shopping. And I'll tell you, there is nothing better than the smell of new electronics in the morning. The smell. Anyway, what we're going to be doing in this episode is going over the different types of computers that people need to do their jobs. As an A-plus technician, it's important that you can kind of understand that there's more than just one kind of PC out there, and what are the type of internals that these different types of PCs need in order to do the job that they do. So let's go ahead and get started with what we call a standard thick client. Now a standard thick client is the most basic type of desktop office computer there is. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of shopping. So what we're going to need here is primarily I'm going to need the hardware that meets the recommended requirements for that particular operating system. So the word is middle of the road. So for me this is going to be the standard thick client tools. I've got a good middle of the road motherboard right here and a matching processor to go with that. I've got myself a nice SSD and I'm going to be running Microsoft Windows on this particular system. So I'm going to be double checking with my Windows requirements making sure I've got the right kind of hardware. Sure we're going to need a power supply and a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor but for you I'll go ahead and let you make those choices. This has got onboard video which is going to be more than good enough for most folks. Also, what we're also going to be installing on here are some kind of desktop applications. Everybody needs to do some word processing or work a spreadsheet, so it probably means in the Windows world, Microsoft Office, although there are certainly alternatives. Now that's an easy one, but pretty much everything else builds from the concept of a standard thick client. Let's do this again, except let's make a standard thin client. In a lot of today's enterprise environments, we use a thin client. The big difference between a thin client and a thick client is that a thin client rarely counts on its own internal storage to do anything. So the big clue here is going to be network connectivity. Let's build ourselves a system. So for my thin client, what I've got here, first and foremost, I wanted to make sure I had a motherboard with great network connectivity. This particular motherboard has gigabit, which is what my network needs, and it's going to be absolutely perfect. Now for the exam, CompTIA says, meets minimum requirements. Eh, okay, for the exam you can say that, but the reality is, is that the only difference between a thin client and a thick client is that the thin client doesn't use its own storage to keep its applications and such. So for me, I still think you should go well beyond your minimum requirements simply because whoever's going to be sitting in that machine doesn't want to be sitting around waiting too terribly long. So minimum requirements for the exam, network connectivity, and there's always going to be a few basic applications. Most of the time on a thin network client, you're only installing the applications that that person who sits at that computer actually needs. So forget your full-blown office installations. This person might be running something as simple as just Microsoft Word or even specialized in-house applications. Okay, so that's good for the basics. I think we need to start taking it up a click. Let's take a look at a graphic station or a computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing type design workstation. Computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing systems are the cornerstone of pretty much everything from automobiles to furniture to everything that we do. And we need powerful systems that can support this type of design. So the big thing that we're going to be looking for more than anything else is a big powerful multi-core processor and some good high-end video. Let's go grab some of that. All right, now we're talking about a Mike Myers kind of system here. First of all, I've got a good, powerful motherboard that's designed to support a multi-core CPU here. I've got an Intel i9. It's actually interesting that CompTIA uses the term multi-core processor because all processors today are multi-core, but this i9 has got a ton of cores in it, and it's going to handle any type of CAD CAM I might need. On top of that, I've got a really good high-end video card, and I've got some RAM in there as well. You know what? I need more RAM. In fact, I need maximum RAM. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> All right, 
So the next system I want to talk about is something really important, which is a virtualization workstation. It's hard to find an environment anymore that doesn't have virtualization workstations. Virtualization is here and we need to have the right kind of hardware to support it. The big thing here, more than anything else, is going to be powerful systems with lots of CPU cores and lots of RAM. Let's go ahead and get that built together. All right, so this time I've got another pretty high-end motherboard with a nice high-end processor to go with that. I need something that can take a lot of work, especially if I'm running lots and lots of virtual machines simultaneously. You're also going to notice I've got my operating system. A lot of operating systems are a little bit dependent on the type of virtual machines you're going to be running. So in this case, I just threw out a copy of Windows Pro. Now, what CompTIA doesn't say, but I'm going to add, is that you need storage. Virtual machines, when they're turned off, can take a lot of space. And a lot of people today, they're going to throw in one SSD, and they're going to make this their big C drive, and this thing gets filled up very, very quickly. So a trick I like to do is I'm going to bring in some more traditional drives just to store the virtual machines when I'm not using them. So I've got tons of CPU cores. I've got a good, robust system. What I need is, yet again, I need maximum RAM. Can you please not throw it at me this time? Oh, thank you. Okay, now the next device I want to talk about is a network attached storage, better known as a NAS. A network attached storage or NAS device is a box that sits on your network. Now this is usually what we call a headless system and once it's up and running, you usually don't have a keyboard or a mouse or a monitor with it. It just sits there and it does one job really well. It shares files and that's what its job is all about. So it might be sharing traditional files and folders using things like NTFS permissions or it might be doing media streaming. The bottom line is whether it's sharing Word documents or audio, it's still just sharing files. So the big things we're going to be worried about here more than anything else is number one, we want to have a good high speed network card in there. Gigabit, in my opinion, would be the absolute minimum. That, of course, assumes that the rest of your network is gigabit as well. And then something to protect all of our data. So that means one thing, a RAID array. Let's build this system up. So here's some of the core pieces I'm going to be using in my NAS. I've got a good mid-range motherboard with a good mid-range CPU. NASes don't really tax your CPU that terribly hard. What they are going to be taxing is the network, and that's why this one has a built-in gigabit Ethernet network card in it so that I can connect to this guy. Now you've got to be careful. When you set up your NAS originally, yeah, you're going to have a keyboard and a mouse on it and a monitor, and you get the whole thing set up and working. Once the NAS is up and running, then you unplug the keyboard and the mouse and the monitor, and you set it in a rack someplace, and you connect to it via the network, because that's the only way we need to connect to the NAS. In fact, with a lot of NAS solutions, once it's initially set up, on the occasional times you do have to connect to it, you connect to it through the network and get to a control panel to do things like replace drives and stuff like that. So that's what we mean by headless. The other big thing we're going to be dealing with with a NAS is that it's storing files, so we need lots of data. So in this particular case, I'm going to put in a minimum of four drives and I'm going to be setting up a good, robust RAID array. Okay, those are fun, but if you really want to talk about how hard you can push technology, there's only one thing to talk about, and that is a gaming PC. You ready to have some fun? There is nothing that taxes your system more than a gaming PC. Games make our computers work really hard, so you're talking top of the line equipment when you really want to game right. So let's start off with, first of all, a good multi-core processor. I think a Ryzen 7 won't be a bad place to start. And if I'm going to have something like that, well, I have, better have a motherboard to support it. Nothing like this with a big chipset to support a big powerful processor. Now, this is going to take a lot of juice, so we're going to need the proper kind of electricity for this guy. Nice high-end uh, power supply. What else do we need here? You know what? With all this, 
we're gonna probably be cooking this system. Let's get some nice high-end cooling. Mmm, liquid cooling for the win. Now, we've got all this power in here, but the next thing we really need to be talking about is graphics. So, how about a graphics card? You know what? How about two graphics cards? Because if I'm gonna be playing high-end gaming, I can take advantage of features like SLI to allow two video cards to push one monitor for super high resolution. But that's never good enough. What else can we put in there? How about some sound? Mm, a nice high-end sound system can often push our sound a lot better than the built-in sound that comes with most motherboards. So, this is looking pretty good, but I'm gonna need one more thing. Oh yeah, that's right. How about some storage? So for me, I'm gonna be using very large SSDs. I might even be putting in a couple of rotational media drives simply for storing my games. So when it comes to the ultimate test of understanding what kind of hardware you need to run games, this is, in my opinion, well, it's uh, not gonna, not gonna say the minimum, but this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna be seeing. I always laugh when people say, oh, I'm gonna get a new computer, so I'm gonna give my old computer to the kids. I was like, no, no, no. Give the kids the new computer because they need the firepower. Okay, now the last thing I wanna talk about is I wanna get back into business a little bit, and let's talk a little bit about audio and video editing workstations. My crew and I do a lot of videos, as you might imagine. So when it comes to audio video editing workstations, there are certain criteria that absolutely have to be there. First of all, I need a good powerful system. I need a good powerful video card. Specialized audio cards is always a good idea. Super fast hard drives. One, heck, even better, dual monitors. But, you know what, I gotta be honest with you. If you really wanna make your life a lot easier when it comes to these type of workstations, Get a Mac.